All right, boys, buckle up, because it's about to get sticky. Nope, not that kind of sticky. This kind of sticky. You touch my ta-la-la. All right, memes aside, this video is meant to serve as a template for your own experimentation and testing. It is not meant to be taken as the only possible build for the character. It is simply what I've found to be most suitable for my playstyle, so let's get right into it. The Huntress excels at taking down multiple enemies and moving quickly around the map. This is due to great AoE coverage in her skills as well as, in my opinion, the best utility skill in the game with her blink. I'll separate the build explanation into two parts, offense and defense slash mobility. Let's start with offense. The Huntress's standard attack is unlike other characters in that it requires you to be in range on an enemy to fire, but will automatically track and strike the target if you're in range. Essentially, it's a homing missile. The upside to having to be in a certain range, however, is that it hits for 150% damage. This is the highest spammable single shot auto attack damage in the game. As a big sentence, so let me explain. The Artificer, the Mercenary, and the Multi do have higher percent damage on their attacks, but the Artificer relies on a charge system and can't continually attack. The Mercenary has higher damage only on his third attack, which happens a third of the time he attacks, obviously, so it's not consistent. And finally, the Multi has a wind-up time to his shot, which is the, the rebar shot, the big sniper, and it's just much slower than his standard attacks. Her auto attack is your bread and butter. It's high damage percent means stacking on-hit effects like sticky bombs, missile launchers, and ukuleles is key since the damage these items do is based off of the damage of the attack that procced them, not just your base damage. So the more damage an attack does, the more damage these on-hit effects will do. Also, you can use your auto attack while sprinting, but I'll go over the effects of this in the mobility section. Your primary focus is gathering sticky bombs since their chance to proc and damage is increased per stack versus just having more damage with the other two. To proc as many on hits as possible, obviously we're going to need some attack speed, so syringes coupled with crit glasses and predatory instincts, as well as zerker pauldrons, will scale nicely together and ensure we proc as many bombs as possible, as well as boosting our overall damage thanks to critting a bunch. For multiple targets, her glaive and rain of arrows work perfectly together. In my experience, and please let me know if this is incorrect in the comments, but her rain of arrows does not proc on hit effects, so your sticky bombs, ukuleles, all that, it will not proc them. So its damage isn't very considerable later in the game where your items like the sticky bombs start becoming most of your damage output. However, the Reign of Arrows slow is extremely useful for setting up a pile of enemies to shoot your glaive into, which does proc on hits. You should really only be using this for its slow and healing, which I'll explain later, once you're past stage four or so. So the later the game goes, use your Reign of Arrows less. But if you have a chance to throw it into the combo without messing it up, such as when a boss is about to spawn or an enemy's just standing still and all of your cooldowns are still waiting to come up, then definitely go for it because it's simply wasted damage potential otherwise. The Glaive's increased damage per bounce also makes it very strong against bosses and ultra release that spawn in packs, often killing them in a single cast. Backup mags are amazing to have on her, giving you multiple Glaives to throw into groups. After the defense and mobility section, I'll put in some uncut gameplay so you can see the optimal rotation of skills quite thoroughly, but the general gist when targeting a new mob is to number one, throw your glaive, number two, throw your range of arrows, and this ensures the targets stay clumped for the glaive to bounce, and three, auto attack the crap out of it and anything else until your glaive is back up. Obviously, there will be some exceptions and this is highly situational. A huge part of this game is knowing how to approach different encounters, but for the most part, you can't go wrong practicing this style. All right, let's move on to defense and mobility. As with most classes, mobility is king for defense. Moving around at lightning fast speeds will enable you to dodge most, if not all, projectiles minus the occasional mishap. You should always be sprinting with the Hunters because you can auto attack while sprinting. There's literally no downside, except when you have to kite backwards while attacking because, well, you can't sprint going backwards. Your only real threats are titan beams and fire mobs. Holy crap, these guys are annoying. I really hope they're nerfed soon because I'm tired of burning for a third of my HP every half second by standing still for a millisecond next to these dudes. Anyway, that was just a big rant. Stacking goat hooves, energy drinks, and hopu feathers. I It's the developer's name, hopu. I don't know if it's hopu or hapo or something. I always mess up some pronunciation in these things. I don't care. It's hopu to me. Goat hooves, energy drinks, and hopu feathers will keep your momentum going at pretty much all times, especially when combined with smart uses of your blink. I stated in the beginning that the blink is the best utility skill in the game, and here's why. It's a blink. Seriously, this can't be overstated. The ability to instantly move from one spot to another, minus the quick cast time, is invaluable later in the game, where any small mistake, <coughs> tickling a fire mob with your pinky toe, <coughs> can mean instant death. 
Not only that, but if you're quick to press your sprint key after using it, the blink keeps most of your momentum intact. So if played correctly, there should be very little time where you are not moving, which is really the only time where you can get killed in the first place. The Mega Jump and Wax Quails are also very good, but be careful stacking too many quails with the Mega Jump because you will be in the air for a long time with more than like three quails, and your momentum slows down very fast in the air. I will usually jump and kite around for a bunch, and once I've slowed down at the peak height, I'll blink downwards in a direction to get momentum back. I recommend only picking up two or three wax quails because anything else is overkill and it will actually start hurting your mobility. Finally, the hard light afterburner is absolutely nuts on her because you get two more blinks and they're up more often. I don't like including too many red items in builds because you can't reliably get them in every run, but they are crazy on her, so I'd be a disservice not to include them here. A final note on mobility. Your rain of arrows will also push you up in the air slightly when activated, so you can use this to your advantage to cleverly dodge a stone golem beam, an exploding jellyfish, or whatever is the case. Now, when errors occur, and oh boy do I make these, you need another layer to your survivability aside from just moving around like Sanic. Since you're already prioritizing attack speed, picking up leeching seeds and, more importantly, harvester scythes will heal you for a very good amount. As I mentioned before, Reign of Arrows can be used to heal you because it hits multiple enemies very frequently, which translates into a rapid recovery of your HP if times get stressful. Since you will be sprinting all the time, Rose Bucklers also help mitigate damage quite considerably. Getting one or two of these bad boys will definitely help your defense significantly. Finally, I'd recommend getting teddy bears on every single class because blocking is a valuable last line of defense for not getting one shot. Alright, and that pretty much covers everything I wanted to say about the Huntress. If you have any questions, recommendations, or disagreements, please let me know in the comments. I'm reading all of them, I promise. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this guide, check out my Artificer guide and be on the lookout for the rest of the classes coming soon. I should have the engineer in a few days or so. Thanks for watching. Be five K. Oh my God! And then all my gold's gone. Wow! Holy! It's all back. I kind of like this, honestly. I think I'll reach and see. Fusion. Got this one. Okay, I like it. Oh, come on. Can't even see what's going on. Nuts. I need a double jump. There was a 3D printer right there. Boom. I hope it's like two of them. I don't care what it is. I just have to I'm 
are you doing this? Oh my. I lost all my gold. What? Coin cannon. Bandolier, bandolier. Mm -hmm. Leech seed, rose buckler. I think the rose buckler is Whip would be okay. I'm not really out of combat now. Right? <laughs> oh, shoot, that was the wrong one. And that was a band. What? What am I doing? Oh, what? Alright, spawn the boss. Add the right one. Add the one. This is gonna take so long. You know what? I'm just doing it. I'm just doing it. Screw it. It's two over there. I'm so glad you don't have to kill all enemies with the teleporter. Just kill the bosses and get out. Oh man, I'm getting crit at all. That would have killed me. Oh, that didn't kill me. What's going on me? What's up, buddy? Get out of there. Oh, probably. All I'm missing is a hard light after so I can get two dashes, two more dashes. That'd be sick. Death. Oh no! I got hit once and I'm dead, and I lost all my money too. Not that matters. You dead yet? Oh, dude. Ooh, that was really bad. Good. Nice double scythe. Oof. You really make it so the glitch can bounce off of the more and more things. Part of its little body, the seconds. That'd be really good. Alright, I'm out of here. No, I'm not. God dang it, man. I knew I should have done that. Oh, well. How much damage do we do? 10 mil. Alright. Yeah, that's some money.